So first of all, just introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Christina Malarvi Quirrell. I'm a poet, an artist and a photographer. And I was part of the communities of Calton and Bridgeton, Parkhead and the Gorbals, particularly in my young life, 13, 14, 15. So where did you grow up then? Well, I grew up in Govan Hill in the Gorbals, uh -huh. but um, I went to, Cal uh, in the Calton, I went to a lady in St Francis, Charlotte Street, um, uh, or otherwise known as St Trinians, to as pupils. Uh -huh. Uh, pupils, I use that word loosely. Um, so that was where I met my other friends, and that would be uh, Cathy O'Brien from Heron Street, Eileen McWilliams from Bonnet Street and Parkhead, and Claire Donaghy from uh, Dilmarnock, and we were a wee posse of four. So you came camp. over the river to come to school? Yes, I did, because we, uh, we were living in Hayfield Street at the time, and the school, you walked through the green to... Uh, Charlotte Street. Mm. So that was the school that I had to go to. I didn't particularly want to go there, but uh, I had to. It was an all girls school uh -huh. and itself is worthy of um, uh, a programme. But all by itself. Because, uh, you know, uh, it was um, a very, we were just talking about that, but there was a lot of class divide uh -huh. in uh, Charlotte Street. Um, so this was a paid for school, was it? It wasn't at that time, but it had been. It also, if you think kind of post-war, uh, we were just talking about some of the the teachers and um, nuns that uh, were trying to teach us, but they were, um, let's say, quite, uh, they were difficult people. And there was a, a culture about the who would do well and who would not. So, for example, um, in the morning when you were going to school, uh, some girls would get dropped off maybe in a Bentley car, 1962, or a very expensive car, because there was girls coming from very, maybe the West End or whatever, but very, very wealthy, affluent families. We were coming from the Gorbals, the Calton, Bridgeton, Parkhead, um, and myself and... Uh, Two of my friends, were, you were coming from a background of um, families that were in strife, if we can put it that way, and uh, you were very much um, at, at the bottom. Mm. Uh, mm. And, and, and you were often, um, quite often, set aside, for example, made to sit outside in a corridor or told you were unteachable. Or there, At that time, there was a lot of physical punishment as well. Mm. And uh, we were a wee posse of four and pretty angry at many things, particularly um, maybe what was going on in families. Um, and, and I mean like alcohol and chaos and lots of different... Uh, you had quite a lot to be angry about. Yeah, and then you went to school and um, really we were just talking about that outside that all the things that you might have went on to do if you hadn't been put off education so much. Mm -hmm. um, and part of being put off it was about, you know, a good pupil was an obedient pupil, a pupil that would acquiesce, a pupil that came from a good family, that, you know, followed all the religious parts and so on. And uh, so it was, it was quite quick that you got to know it wasn't us. <laughs> yeah. And in return, as a, a young people at 13 and 14, and you've got to remember this is the time of Bob Dylan, Rolling yeah, Stones, Joe Baez, yeah. all that. Yeah, so yeah. all the all the culture is also telling you, um, you know, uh, the old road is changing. And, so uh, it's a far uh, cry from there was no Jean Brodie there. It sounds very different. No, no, very. It's it would be worth a wee study uh -huh. <laughs> because it's uh -huh. very polar opposites, you know. Yeah. But um, you know, we 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 survived and we. Uh, went on. I think the thing I always felt very aggrieved about was um, it definitely put me off formal ed education for quite a long time. Took me maybe into my twenties or thirties before I, I kind of had the confidence to return to education. And I kind of, well, I was expelled from school and I kind of left at 15 thinking, well, it seems like you're either born quite clever or you're not born clever, so that would 
be me. Um, because all the, all the everything around about you was sort of trying to tell you that. So it's a terrible thing to do that to young people to sort of close down that sense of um, inquiry and curiosity. But that that was, you know, across the country, <laughs> if you go back to those kind of times. You so know. were you quite radicalised by this then, politically yourself? Well, we, we, at that time, we, you, we probably didn't think we were, OK? But you, you were listening to particularly music. And um, my friends and I were very involved in kind of music to do, like Tamla Motown, Otis Red and Sam Cooke, all the... All the good stuff. Uh, well, yeah, and also... How, how did you become emotionally literate? How did you see what was happening to you? The, the music said it. You had a channel, a conduit to uh, express through some of this music. And Glasgow at that time was just wonderful for music. We had the Maryland up on Scott Street, Muddy Water sang there. We had uh, the Picasso Club, we had um, OK, Locarno, Barland, all these places. We would come out of school sometimes on the Monday about 12 o'clock to try to get round to the Barland to see who was bringing their gear out because it could have been the Kinks, it could have been the Stones. It could have, you know, you didn't, they weren't that famous then, but, you know, um, that was pretty exciting. So we always... Um, I'm still uh, very close friends with Cathy, uh, who's the same age as me, and we still talk about how music saved our emotional life not only saved it, but um, gave us a language. We were able to actually, we knew in the school what was happening was wrong. Um, our rights were being invalidated. And you didn't have parents or family. Families didn't do that then. You know, you didn't go and challenge teachers or no. doctors or priests or ministers. You just didn't do that. The whole culture of deference. Oh, oh, oh absolutely. You know, um, uh, when I did go back to uh, learning, that was one of the quotes that uh, came out to me when I uh, was finishing some of my writing, which was, uh, if in Scotland there is an exaggerated respect for authority, we have to look to the institutions where that came from, and school was one of them, it, and religion, yeah, and family. And religion, certainly. It's very interesting, because at the same time as you're describing that, you know, well, even before that, uh, Glasgow has developed this reputation for radical trade unionism, yeah. leftist politics, and all the rest of yeah. it. And I wonder if those two things are in any way related. Well, they definitely are. They are, particularly if, if you uh, have a history from the Gorbals and uh, Govan Hill. And my ancestor in the Gorbals goes back to 1850. Um, and the Gorbals at one time was a, a very radical, organised uh, community in many, many ways. Um, and I, you have to look back on what has happened to systematically destroy that, uh, not just in the Gorbals, but in many parts of uh, uh, Glasgow and uh, Scotland. So I, I did, I grew up with my, my, my parents, although they were, um, uh, my, my mother and father were married in uh, 1940. My mother was from Irish Catholic, my father was from Orange Protestant. That was a big taboo to break at that time. Mm -hmm. Both families were again it. My father converted to be able to become married, but to do, even to do that now, can be a very difficult path. So we, we grew, I'm one of five sisters, and we grew up in a household where, for both my parents, they had challenged a lot of that. And Just by being, getting married in the first place? That, that alone was an enormous challenge. And um, their, their uh, way of bringing up their five daughters was, uh, my father was about inquiry and curiosity, my mother maybe a bit more about religion, but we were, for example, quite fortunate as a family. We, we weren't at home, we weren't hit, for example, with books, all of that. My father had attended uh, socialist meetings in the Gorbals when he was younger. and So there was a sense of all of, all of that. You had a little bit of history about, about what was right and wrong, what was values. What, what did he work at? He was a labourer and also um, uh, did a little bit in engineering. He was very self-taught. But in another piece that I wrote about that later on, when they made that decision, they thought Hitler was the enemy. 
but their own community was actually part of the enemy. So they had a long haul when they come back. It was the war that made them brave to say we're going to do this. And then when they came, when after the war, when he survived and came back, that's very difficult then to keep that, uh, all of that going. But what, what school did do for me, I had my friends and uh, Cathy, uh, what, in, in the communities we came from then, as young females, you had to be quite tough. I wasn't very tough, but Eileen and Cathy were, so I was always in the middle of them. And they, they were great protectors. But it's quite interesting, sorry to interrupt, but it's quite interesting that they, they came from, I think you said, uh, the Carlton and Park here, the other side of the river. Yeah, yeah. And you, so was there, that was quite unusual, it, se it, it seems to me, that you, you made connections, not you, well, but people well, made connections. Well, look, my family had split up and I'd moved from Govan Hill to the, back to the Gorbals. By this, yeah. So they thought I was a wee bit kind of posh. <laughs> <laughs> so they kind of started to school me so that I would survive where I was then. Right. Uh, which meant you had to have a bit of that kind of front to uh, get through because uh, there, there was a lot of gangs and there was quite a bit of fighting and that wasn't just boys, that was girls, you know, it was, it was, it was serious business if you got involved, so you, they, they, you had to be quite careful. How, how did you negotiate not getting involved? Because, I mean, there are lots of people Well, a lot of this, bluster, but... a lot of bluster and a lot of certain people round about you. Um, you had to be connected. Uh -huh. to certain other ones that other ones wouldn't, you know, really get involved with. But what it did help me with when I had my own sons and they went into school was I never let any of that happen for them. So that was a great, um, a, a, a wonderful kind of learning, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and that, that wasn't easy either. But oddly enough, you've answered the question I was just about to ask, is what did you, what did you take out of that background? But uh -huh. clearly, that's, well, that's one I, thing. Yeah, it was it, not, not just for my sons. I went into youth work, I went into community work, I went into advocacy work, uh, trade union work, work with health, community, women, uh, women's aid and so on. It gave you a great sense of um, if we'd had more champions or advocates for with us at that time. You'd have been... You know, uh, so in youth work, some of the young people that were perhaps giving you the, it was, they were in most turmoil. I would try to work harder with them because that anger and everything that's going on, you know, you don't do any of that just for nothing. Mm -hmm. It's, there's mm -hmm. something behind mm -hmm. it, you know. Sure. So, um, and sometimes it can be giving young people permission to not be tough or to have a vision of your future um, uh, and just, saying you're okay, telling young folk you're okay, you're okay, this will pass and you you will be good at that. Mm -hmm. I think in my family they would say I'm a great motivator and encourager because I think you, you become what you perhaps needed or wanted mm -hmm. yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so all those teachers that weren't so lovely and were pretty horrible, um, <laughs> Uh, I actually have just been back inside Charlotte Street because it's empty at the moment. Um, but I knew the person that uh, had, had bought it and they let me in. And I went round the school, took some pictures and things. But it was, a, it was a great feeling because I felt like I've not been back here from when I was 15. That's who you said I would be, but this is who I became.